Hi, my name is Kyle Houchins. I'm a tech and a trainer for McNeil, and I wanted to do one last video of 2020, try and send this year out on a good note, uh, to do a little bit more sub D work. So, um, like normally, I'm going to start this project with the picture command, and I'm going to browse to my desktop, find my image, and I'm going to drop this guy in here. This is a sketch I did based on a trike from the 50s, I believe. And uh, I, I liked it for an inspiration, and then I kind of did my own version of it, and I stretched it out a little bit and hot-rotted it a little bit more. So um, we're going to take a look at this thing and try and break it down and do as much sub-D work on this as we can. And while we do that, I want to talk a little bit about kind of like how do you approach a project like when somebody hands you this and says build this and you go huh, great <laughs> I've never built anything like that before like where do I even start and the idea is I want you to be able to start looking at this with a critical eye and kind of determine you know where you're gonna start so you can kind of proceed confidently and and you know move into a sub D model uh, with with some level of confidence now that said um, if you've seen my videos in the past, you'll notice that I do a lot of finding the way along the way. And, uh, and so sometimes I'll start off with the best laid plans and then we'll end up, you know, tossing the rule book into a wood chipper and trying to figure out like, okay, now what? So that's kind of part of the deal um, when I do stuff. And I try to, um, you know, show stuff that I've never modeled before. I've never modeled this before. I drew, I drew this sketch a little bit before Christmas and then and then parked it on my desktop for a while until I got time to record this. But the the idea behind this is I want to put myself in the same position you're in where somebody hands you uh, a sketch and then you're, you know, trying to task with trying to figure out what in the world, you know, you want to do and how you want to make it. So um, with that, let's go ahead and jump in. Um, we brought the picture in via picture frame. I did take the liberty of actually building a wheel already because um, it's just a simple revolve and I didn't want to waste time building that uh, when we can focus on sub -Ds. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to park this image right over the wheel and then I'm going to change my gumball. I've got a hotkey for changing the location of my gumball but if you don't have that you just use relocate gumball and reset gumball here. And I'm going to just scale this image up holding shift to make you know to match the wheel and then that way I know kind of what my size is and what I'm doing I don't have any dimensions on this but I do want the the wheel to kind of fit within you know my sketch parameters so once I've got that nailed down I'm gonna go to the perspective view and I'm just gonna drag this guy straight back in space and the reason that I do that is I don't want the I don't want this right which you can already see is I don't want the image bisecting the model like that because I can't see the back of the model through the image. So I'm going to just take that and I'm going to drag it straight back in space. From the front view it still appears in the correct position but from the perspective view it's out of the way and I don't have to deal with it. So I'm going to stick this on a layer of its, of its own. Right click and say change object layer and then I'm going to drop the opacity on this a little bit by clicking on it. Going to its properties uh, actually, and then going to the material, and then coming down here to the object transparency, and cranking that up, up, up a little bit until the image fades out to something that you want. Something 60-70% seems to be kind of reasonable in this situation, so let's go ahead and call that done, and then we'll go back to our layer, and then we'll just lock this. And then that way we know this is, you know, it's in our scene, we can deal with it, we can turn it on and off, all that kind of stuff. And I had, if I had more than one view, I would have more than one layer. I'd have image front, image side, image top, image right. And I would stick those all on individual layers. That way I could turn them on and off as, as needed. I'm also going to lock the wheel. Just, I, I don't need to select that. I just want it for reference. And then I'm going to leave it on its own layer so that I can turn it on and off as, as needed. So let's go back to front view. And then I actually am going to unlock the wheel. Spoke a little too soon. And then I'm going to copy just drag alt tap with gumball and I'm going to shift drag scale to get my rear wheel and I'm going to just place that somewhere in there and that looks like about maybe just a little bigger about the right size that way and then I actually want to hot rod this thing a little bit so I'm actually going to make big fat wheels on this thing so that it's got big fat fenders and then I'm going to drag this a little bit out in space 
so that you know we get our little tricycle action and then I'll mirror it and stick the other one out there and then that's my basic you know basic layout and I'll play with it and I'll look at the proportions and stuff and see maybe we'll move these later but for the time being I'm gonna just call that done and put those where they need to be and for now I'm just gonna hide them because I know they're in the right spot I, I don't need to mess with them I'm just gonna you know I'm just gonna go from there so so let's take a look at the bike part and try and figure out what we're gonna build first and I'm gonna go for probably the easiest get which is going to be the chassis, or maybe the front fender. Maybe the front fender is the easiest get. Maybe the rear fender actually is the easiest get, because I could probably do that with half a sphere. Um, yeah. Nah. Let's just jump into the front fender. Why not? Um, and I'm going to do this. If you've seen any of my videos in the past, you'll uh, you'll recognize this term. I'm going to paper doll this this fender, which means I'm going to build this thing flat and then I'm going to position it and then I'm going to bridge over to the other side and then you know fill in all the mits missing bits and pieces and the first thing I'm going to do to paper doll this thing is I'm going to just start with my original curve and I'm going to do something really light and I'm going to turn on my points do a little point editing and you're like wait a minute I thought this was a sub D edit video why are we doing curves because you can do curves in sub D's which is really cool it's one of the cool things about our sub D system and I'm gonna actually use my nudge keys to dial this in and if you don't have nudge or if you don't know what I'm talking about or you want nudge let's go tools options modeling aids nudge and this is the setting up here you've got alt plus arrow keys to get nudge I just use the arrow keys um, regular arrow keys without the alt you can use them for view manipulation to rotate the model, but I, I never done. I've used Rhino for a long time, and I've never used that. So I always just use the arrow keys for nudge. And I'm going to use the C-plane axis, and then you can set your values down here. The nudge key alone is 0.2 inches. The control plus nudge is 0.05, and shift plus nudge is 2 inches. And that allows you to kind of have a different range of adjustments to allow you to be able to sneak up on stuff. And I can see right away I've got a nice four-point curve, which makes a really nice spline, and then it points out the disgustingness of my original curve, how it went, you know, pretty flat right here. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and trust Rhino to make the curves as opposed to my caffeine-addled wrist, and I'm going to follow my gut and let Rhino draw this curve better than I did. So I'm going to just back up a little bit. I like to kind of zoom out and look at it and make sure that it's doing what I want it to do. And then I'm going to actually take this and I'm going to copy and paste it. <coughs> and the reason that I'm going to do that is I'm actually going to take this curve and I'm going to use it for the inside of this. And you say, well, why don't you just draw a circle? Well, I could draw a circle, but the point count is going to be different on that. And this one, I already know what my point count is. So I'm going to take this and pull this curve into shape very quickly and that is going to make it a lot easier when I go to bridge the inside or loft the inside and the outside together. I'm actually going to pull this over just a little bit and again I'm going to just nudge this into shape using my keys alt keys actually well I'm actually using control because that's the smallest setting there we go. And so what this does is now, if, I, if you look at this, I've got, two, I've got two curves, right? They've both got the exact same point count. That means when I go and sub-D loft this, if I go to my sub-D palette and I loft this, you can see I don't want to rebuild this. And let's see, I want to adjust the shape segments and let's add some segments in here. I want, I don't know, four, five, something like that seems to be good. And then I'm going to add my, not creases, but corners. And that gives me, you know, a basic approximation of my shape. So it's, you, you can see that it's not exact, exact. And the reason for that is these curves are, the curves that I drew are not considered sub D friendly. And there's a whole big long explanation as to what that means. But I don't really care because I just wanted to get close, right? And the divisions between, you can see I've got a little, I've got a little droop down here, and I can't get that droop unless I have a center line. So I'm going to actually add 
a center line to there and that's going to give me everything that I need. I'm going to delete my curves because I don't need them anymore and now I'm going to go to box mode and I'm going to just start editing this thing a little bit. I'm shift control clicking to get my vertexes and I'm just adjusting those. Just I just want to change my flow a little bit. I don't like how the flow is not quite radial enough. And I'm going to switch back and forth to box from box mode to smooth mode to just kind of keep an eye on what's going on here. But I do most of my editing in box mode. Let's go to wireframe so we can see what our original curves look like. And again, I can use nudge. I can pick a vertex and I can nudge this and that allows me to get nice and close to what I'm doing and quickly kind of sneak up on my shape. I don't need to sweat it too much, right? This is all like really flexible. I can I can push and pull and try things and and experiment and you know iterate and decide do I like that? Do I not like that? You know, it's it's a super flexible, super easy system to kind of play with, which is one of the reasons I like it because it's a lot like kind of having you know the ability to be able to model out of taffy. I'm going to uncrease this corner. I'm going to go to my sub D tools. I'm going to uncrease this corner. And you can see that that gives me a big curve in there, which doesn't really match what I want. So I'm gonna actually going to put that back. And I'm going to figure out how to add this little piece of trim later. In fact, what I might do, now that I'm thinking about it, I might actually pull this up to above the trim. And I might add that trim later. I think that's probably a better plan. Just kind of want to think about like what's going to make my life easy later. Some would have said if I was thinking of that, I probably should have not gone to art school, but take our best shot and live with our choices, right? No, actually, art's treated me very well. I'm very happy with my job. All right, let's uncrease this one and see. And that actually flows pretty nicely. That's pretty close to what I wanted, so I'm actually going to roll with that. This one down here, maybe not so much. I think it's probably a little too extreme. Now, I could actually probably sharpen that by moving this guy. See how I can push that in like that? But that gives me, I got a little issue with that's not allowing me to get there, which means I may need to actually add a second second uh, row, or I may need to actually add another row up here, actually is probably what I need to do. So let's do that. Let's add another row. You can see that that just, see how it just tightens up like that? Let's add that right there. And then let's pull this more into shape. There we go. And I'm just going to fix the flow a little bit. So now the goal is I don't want to add, I don't want to do this, right? I don't want to do, I don't want to have millions and millions of edges here. And the reason for that is the same reason that I don't want to have a million points in a curve, right? If I'm going to make a corner in Rhino, I only need three points, right? That's all I need. I need one, one, two, three. And if I want it to be sharper, I go here. If I want it to be softer, I go out here, right? That's all I need in order to make a transition. What I don't want to do is this. Because this is what happens. If I show the curvature comb on both of those, see how nice this one is up here? See how terrible this one is here? It's because there's so many points in here, I've interjected all sorts of inflection into that curve, and I don't need all that stuff. I don't need all that extra information in order to be able to make this corner. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to not do that, right? <laughs> I'm going to, instead of that, I'm going to not do that. <laughs> so, so that's the goal. We want to, we want to not have points that we don't need, and we want to make these things as light as possible that way they're nice and smooth 
And you can see for the most part we have kind of the shape that we're looking for. So let's go to the perspective view. Let's bring our wheels back and let's place this guy kind of here and see where exactly it is that it falls in relationship to our model. I'm going to mirror this around zero. And then, and you can see that I think, looks like I don't have my wheel centered on zero. Either that or I screwed up my mirror. It looks like my wheel's not centered, so let's fix that. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, why won't that select? Because I have it locked. <laughs> so let's do this. And I'm going to just place a point at zero so I have something to snap to. And I'm going to use snappy dragging just to snap that right to that point. And that will lock me back down. And I'm probably too close here, so I'm going to back this off. And because I did my mirror with, with uh, history on down here, right, always record update, it allowed it to move out like that for me. So the next step would be to just take these two edges. I'm going to click the start edge, start edge and the end edge, and I'm going to double click. And that selects everything in between. And I'm going to use a bridge command. And in this case, I probably could get away with, you know, one division, but I'm going to add one more just so I have a center line. I like that because it's easy to adjust. And then I can modify the straightness. It can be super straight or not so straight. And that, you know, that, that additional center line gives me a little bit more adjustment to be able to deal with it. So I'm going to place it somewhere around there. And then I can see right off the bat that I, ha I, have, to, I have to do some modifications to, to get this to, to um, fit, right? <laughs> like, what's the word I'm looking for? The word is fit, Kyle. Fit is the word you're looking for. It's not a hard word. <laughs> you try modeling and talking at the same time. It's not as easy as it looks, but um, actually it is, but it's all right. Um, so I've got my tire out here, and it looks like, actually, I'm going to back up because I just see what I did. I made my wheel way too big, so let's scale this down. I scaled it. I scaled the hub to the inside of the tire instead of the tire, so let's fix that. That looks better. And let's bridge again. I'm going to pre-select. If I pre-select, then I can just run the bridge command. If I post-select the bridge, then I have to actually go in and add my... I have to click each edge and then say accept and then go from there. It's a pain. So I'm going to adjust my roundness here. And let's go to the front view and just see what we look like. And I'm going to place it probably right in there. It's not like we have any suspension on this thing to worry about. So I can, you know, I can cheat that. I could actually even cheat that so it goes into the frame if I wanted to. But I think I'm going to leave it here. So the cool thing about this is you can actually design in 3D. You know, the whole goal is we don't want to, we don't be modelers, right? We're not modelers, we're designers. We want to design things and we want them to look cool and we want to we wanna have the ability to be able to um, interpret our designs and make them exactly what we want as opposed to just looking at something and then saying, well, how do I model that? I'm a modeler. You're not a modeler, you're a designer, you're an artist, you want to be able to do art and you want your tools to do what you want them to do. And so that's the whole goal with this is to, to use this stuff, to use a critical eye and look at it and say, what, you know, is this shape what I want? And so hopefully, you know, when I, when I do these videos and stuff, I try to have this kind of stream of consciousness workflow that I can babble on and model stuff and and try and discuss like the decisions and stuff that I make in my in my own practice and hopefully it'll allow you to be able to free yourself from the I'm a modeler paradigm and get more into the I'm a designer who happens to work in 3D paradigm where the sketch is just a guide and the and the you know the the tool does what you want it to do I'm going to go ahead and try and put in this additional trim here, right? I'm going to hide my wheels now because I don't need them anymore. I'm going to put this additional trim in here. And to do that, I'm going to add a face. And I'm going to double click the entire edge. And just for brevity's sake, I'm going to 
start scaling, I'm going to hold down control and you can see that it adds an additional set of edges. Now, it it's not necessarily doing placing them all in the right position, so to speak, but it's just giving me the stuff that's there. And while it's still selected, I can go into the front view and start pulling these to where I want them to be. And they're not going to be perfect. We're going to need to to do some additional work here, but the main goal is to try and get as many of them as we can right off the bat and then go in and adjust later. And if I drag select, I can get both sides. And it's, you know, if I screw up and I don't get both sides, it's all right because I can always go back and put it back with the reflect command. Let's go to wireframe. Let's go to the box mode, and that's kind of where we want to determine what our topology looks like. And I'm going to just use the arrow keys to place these a little bit more precisely to where I wanted them to be in the first place. I have a new audio setup, by the way, for this video, so I hope the audio is better than my audio on some of the other videos has been. If you hate it and would prefer me to go back to my old tin can audio, I can do that too, but... I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments. All right, so we're pretty close. We've got, you know, the basics for what we want for this piece of trim. And you can see that it's it's kind of poking out, but it's poking out probably a little too far. And in fact, this one I want to be almost flush with the back like that. So it's poking out and I actually want to bring that in so it's a little tighter. And then I'm going to do one more, actually. I think I went a little hard on that. I'm going to back up a little bit. Let's back up. I'm going to put that back to where I found it. What I needed to do first, and I'm going to do this in box mode, is I'm going to grab this edge and I'm going to get my shelf. So I'm going to start dragging, hold down control. That's my transition. So that's all I wanted to do with that. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this, hold down control, and that's going to be my step. That's what I wanted to do. So now I've got a little trim edge on that. See that? And I'll have to adjust it because it sucks up here and all that kind of stuff. But let's. But the the upside is we've got you know the information that we need in order to be able to work with it now. So I'm going to come back here and I can see right away in box mode that the flow on this is terrible. I'm going to go to wireframe. I'm going to just straighten that out a little bit. Anytime you see you know if your box mode looks like this, you you know you got to fix it. So just fix it. It's fine. I'm going to grab this. Just line up all the little all the little dots. We just want everything all lined up. It's like a Bob Ross moment. It's just happy little dots, happy little lines. <laughs> want all our happy little lines lined up. Let's grab both of these. Once you get used to this and when you've done quite a bit of sub demodeling you'll get to the point where you can kind of see this stuff and you'll be like okay well that needs to come up a little bit more like that and you'll be able to start kind of reading the box mode and you'll see kind of what's doing what and where it needs to be in this stuff you'll know that this needs to kind of be out here and you'll know that this needs to kind of be down here and you know this kind of needs to be down here And you'll be able to kind of start seeing this stuff for what it is. And you'll see that, like, okay, this is going to get fat, and then it's going to pinch down real hard. I don't want it to pinch down that hard, so I'm going to make this a little bigger. And then I'm going to straighten out that flow. And then it's going to start to taper. And then right here it's falling off. It needs This needs to be straight here if I want that to be flush. See how those kind of all start to line up? You don't need to get crazy with it. You can, you really can just kind of get it close-ish 
until you get your forms established and then you can start refining. So let's take a look and see what we do. I think we've got a better flange here now. That's more what I was looking for. So if we go to rendered view and if I put a material on this, I'm just going to use a simple paint for right now. Oh, come now. Pick the right one, you ding dong. There we go. Sorry for my 1940s curse words. <laughs> so now we can see that, that this is now starting to do what we want it to do, right? It's got that nice kind of stamped metal feel and the flange comes up here and then it just kind of fades out which is exactly what I wanted and eventually what I'll do is I'll split that off and that'll be a color break but let's go back and do our final adjustment so I'm gonna grab these and again I'm just gonna use the nudge keys I'm control shift dragging in order to get those these points picked by the way you can use selection filters and you can do all that kind of stuff. Um, I find that the control shift drag is a little faster. So that's how I'd, why I use that instead. It's a little bit more efficient, a little bit, a little bit faster. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to follow this line up here. See how you can kind of, you can just play with this stuff, right? You can just see what it looks like and you can try something and say, oh, I like that. Oh, I don't like that. <laughs> you know? Um, and so that's that's kind of what I want to encourage you to start doing is to really don't be afraid of this stuff. Just grab it and start yanking it by the scruff of its neck and get it to do what you want it to do. And then go to box mode and take a look at the mess that you've made and then fix it. <laughs> Why did I notice that there was a mess that, to be made? See this? Eee, like that? That is a really good telltale in indication that your box mode is all jacked up and you need to go fix it. So let's untangle this. I'm going to put this back here. I'm going to put this back here. That's why I say model in box mode, refine and smooth. Don't model in smooth because it's really easy to make a mess and you just saw me do it. So I'm going to pull this up, and it looks like I've got an extra edge here that I may or may not need, so we'll take a look at that in a second and see what's going on. All right, so let's take a look at that. And I think that's okay. I may, what happens if we delete that? Let's see what it looks like in rendered mode. That might, it may or may not be better. We'll see. It fades it out, which is nice, but it gives me, I lose, see how I lost that highlight? I think I want to keep that highlight in, and I think I want it to fade out higher. So I think I'm going to leave that edge. I'm just going to manage it and make sure that it's, that it's uh, flush. And I can see that I've got a little reveal back here that I need to fix. So let's go to box mode and fix that. And you can see exactly where that reveal is coming from, just because these are not lined up. Much better. I can see that I've come off my sketch a little bit, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull this back. A little give and take here and there, and you just make, make your decisions along the way to make sure that it's doing what you want it to do. all comes down to just lining up the little squares. Imagine, I say this all the time, but imagine if you were to build a model out of nothing but post-it notes. That's, that's how you determine what your topology and stuff supposed, is supposed to look like. Now, here's a cool little issue. See, see how I've got a nice straight line here, and ideally what I want this to do, I'm just going to draw a line here as a guide just as an example. I really want all of this stuff to be lined up. Now I can actually simply just go and draw a line <laughs> and stretch it out like that and that's super easy, right? But what I also can do is I can grab these edges and then I can put my gumball right here
and I'm going to align it. I'm going to hold down control and I'm going to rotate it. And then I'm going to scale these guys to the line. See how that lines that right up and straightens it right out? That's a cool that's a cool trick. So I can do the same thing here. Watch this. I'm going to gumball re relocate to here. I'm going to control drag rotate so that it's lined up with that isoprem and then re just straighten that out. And it would be nice if I did it on both sides. But I can also put it back with symmetry later with uh, reflect later. But I'll just do it here. Like that. Alright, I'm going to grab both of these. Control, rotate. Now there's little finger jujitsu involved here because um, if I were to, I'm going to relocate the gumball here, control, click, drag, rotate. I'm going to line that arrow up and then watch this. I'm going to use a scale handle. Straighten that out. Little gumball super superpowers. Or you can just drag it. Whatever you want to do. It's up to you. All right. So it looks like I've got a little mess here that I have to untangle. And I want that to be fairly close to there, but not inverted. And then let's take a look and see if we've made a mess. Looks pretty good. And I'm actually going to turn on the sub D wires in my, in my rendered mode. And then that way it gives me a little better look at what's going on here. And I'm pretty happy with that transition. If I wanted that to be sharper, I could simply just double click this and I could go to the sub D tools and I could bevel this and add a couple more edges around here like that. And then see how that, if I shut the wires off, you can see it's gotten much sharper. But I don't like that. I like it kind of soft and, and like stamped sheet metal-y looking. Now we do have these darts on this thing and I may think about those for a while because I really like the shape that I have here on this and I don't particularly want to disturb that and I get this all the time from people where they're like you know I'm deep into this model and I want to add this detail and I don't like you know I don't like what it's doing to my topology and you know what do I what do I do about it and I'm like well <laughs> you can just keep going and you can add that detail in as a separate piece later and then just you know fill it in there um, you can blend it in or do whatever you want um, we could go through and actually design the topology in order to be able to do that you know we'd have to have our edges coming through here but this part would start to get a lot more complicated and and as I showed before with the curve example <clears throat> If you add a whole lot of more a whole lot more detail, then you're also adding the possibility for inflection, and when you add the possibility for inflection, then that adds you know dents, and your highlights can start tracking crazy and stuff like that. So, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to defer on the darts for just a little bit, and I'm going to work on some other stuff, and and ponder that for a bit, and I think I may actually go back and put those in at separate pieces later, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So let's bring our wheels back and just take a look and see what we're doing. So that looks all right. Might be a little wide. This thing doesn't have any suspension on it, so we can actually tuck this pretty close to the tire. That feels all right. All right, let's see what we look like in the grand scheme of things. And let's save this because faith may save your soul, but only control S will save your data. Alrighty. We're good. So let's look at let's look at the rear fender and then um, we can start talking about the body or maybe I'll build the body first and we'll throw the rear fender on 
later. Maybe we'll do that out of the sphere or something easy. But let's, um, I'm going to make this the front pender layer. To pick the object first, silly. All right, change object layer. And then I'm going to just hide it for now. All right, so let's take a look, and I'm going to hide the wheels so I can see what I'm doing. Let's take a look at the body. Let's get that roughed in, and then we'll figure out what to do with the rear fenders. And it looks like to me, there's, you know, typically in a tricycle, there's this main central beam, right? There's this, this chassis, and then it's got this kind of wing steps on the back that form a T if you look at it from the top. And, um, and so let's go ahead and build the central beam first. We'll build the wing sections second, and then we'll figure out how to marry them together, whether we either leave them as separate parts and do a, and convert to NURBS and then do a blend later, or whether we do it in sub D or what the deal is. You know, if this was stamped steel, it would probably be made out of a right half and a left half, and it would either be welded or riveted together. And then these things would probably be a separate part that would then be, you know, either riveted or welded on or spot welded in the back. Um, but we might want to look, you know, do something, maybe this is like a futuristic polymer, you know, carbon fiber hand laid up crazy something or other. And it's, it's all seamless, but we'll, we'll see, we'll get down the road and, and make that decision later. But again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to just paper all this body out, which means I'm going to just start. And I like loft as a, as a starting point. You could draw these out as individual, you know, faces. And I do, I do a lot of that actually, but um, in this case, I think, I think laying it out with loft is just going to be a little quicker. So let's pull this. I'm going to just pull that. I'm going to ignore the little fishtail off the back of this right, right this second, and let's loft, sub D loft. Watch Kyle find the loft. <laughs> Come on, man. You do this for a living. There we go. All right, so I'm going to adjust the shape segments. I'm going to add some more shapes, and I'm actually in rendered mode, so i got to go to shaded mode so I can see what in the world's going on. I am going to add my corners, and that actually made a pretty decent shape, and I may add one row in now just for fun. Um, actually, you know what? I'm not. I'm going to just do it one row for now, and then I'm going to grab my curves, I'm going to hide this, and then you can see that we got really close to what we're doing. I'm going to uncrease this corner, and then I'm going to pull this edge down. And that actually is pretty darn close to what I wanted. So I may call that, I may call that good. We'll see. few little adjustments just to get my shape more to my liking and again I'm gonna just do that with nudge and this is close you know you're like hey you said model in box mode yeah I know but I'm really really close so I'm actually just kind of refining at this point if I had to do big edits I would absolutely do those in box mode all right, same scenario. We've got we've got a little reveal that runs along this thing. And so I'm actually going to do that this way. I'm going to grab just this edge and I'm going to insert an edge coming down here like this. And I do actually like to insert edges in box mode so I can see what's going on and really precisely place them. And I'm going to drag these into shape. And I could have done this, you know, I could have added this in the loft and then just adjusted it later, but I wasn't quite sure what I was doing, <laughs> if I'm being honest. <laughs> I wasn't quite exactly sure how this was going to go. Um, so, because I've never built it before, that's the whole point. <laughs> so let's add that step in there. And then let's take a look at what we've got. Now, the... As it sits right now, I could pull this edge, this edge, out, and it would give me my little flare, right? But it doesn't give me my return, so I actually need more edges in here. So I actually am going to take this guy 
and I'm going to add an edge. I'm going to do it in box mode. I'm going to add an edge above it, like that. And then I'm going to take this guy, and I'm going to add an edge next to it. And then what I can do is that gives me the ability to be able to grab these faces, and I can pull them out, and I get the right topology, right? So I've got one, two, three, that's that corner, and I've got one, two, three, that's this corner. So it's going to be a soft corner, but it is a corner, and that's what I, that's kind of what I was looking for, was just that nice, soft, kind of stamped feel, and you can see how it comes into the corner nicely, and it kind of does its thing. Now, the, the way that I'm envisioning this is from the top view, this thing has a little bit of a flare to it and and it's not it's not just like it's not just a linear like you know skinny in the front fat in the back I, I see it kind of starting about the width of the fender and let's bring the fender up so we can see what it where it goes I'm seeing it start kind of about the width maybe a little less of the width of the fender and then I'm seeing it kind of like open up at the back a little bit so I'm gonna hide my fender and then I'm going to grab all of these guys, and I'm going to use the Bend Deformer, which will give me the opportunity to do a really nice procedural bend. And Subd's in, in UDTs, uh, the Universal Deformation Tools, which are up here in the Transform Palette, these work really well with Subd stuff. I love using these tools together because you get really gorgeous. Look at that. It's so much nicer than I could have done just positioning that stuff myself. So let's take this and mirror it. And then I'm going to go ahead and bl uh, bridge everything all the way down to here. And again, I'm pre-picking my edges. That way when I run bridge, it just bridges instead of making, making me pick all sorts of stuff, which is, I can't stand post-picking. I always pre-pick stuff, but that's just me. All right, I'm going to say OK. I am going to leave the center line down here because I do want to do some adjustments on the center line. And I actually may get rid of these edges now. Let's see. Eh, no. <laughs> Let's try these. What's that do? Yeah, I like that better. One thing you'll notice about the, the Rhino subdies in particular is they are incredibly durable. Um, they, they really stay solid when you mess with them. And I may want that edge, I may not, we'll see. I may want to get rid of this one. See how it kind of flattened out? I don't like that. So I think I'm going to leave that in there and just manage that transition. So let's take a look at what our sketch looks like. And right off the bat you can see like what's going on here. See how this like starts to come and then it whips up here and then it dives back down. That is not awesome so let's straighten all that out so I'm gonna just grab this and I'm gonna straighten that out I actually want it to roll a little bit so I'm gonna bring it down and everything else looks you know fairly organized and you can see how few how few faces I have I do not have a lot of geom geometry here which is which is exactly what I want now the next detail on this thing if I hide this you can see that there's the the profile of this comes and then there's like a little Z you know the highlight on this thing would look like this you know so in order to get that it has to be you know separated back here and it has to be flush up here so let's go ahead and do that and I think the best way to do that is going to be just to grab these faces here and just extrude them Boop, like that and then we'll go to box mode and fix the mess we just made and I'm gonna pull these guys back there I'm gonna pull this out like that and this edge might want to come in a little bit I'm gonna have to figure out like do I need this guy or not maybe maybe not and then I'm gonna pull this one up to here and then 
I have to get my split in there somehow. Boo, that's ugly. Let's fix that. See how box mode just shows all of the sins? You can like see exactly what's going on. See, I want that to be round. I want this to be round. And then one of these edges has got to go. Probably that one. And you can see the dip, right? You can see the dip in there. See how it right, kind of sinks in like that. We don't want that. And we'll, there's a mess going on down here. We'll have to straighten that out in a little bit. But let's figure this out. Let's get that where we want it. Let's get this where we want it. And then this this is is coming back too far so I actually need to add an edge and I try to not do this unless I have to but in this case I have to actually maybe not he says thoughtfully what happens here let's get rid of this face actually I think I'm gonna do this I'm gonna extrude these a couple of times and then I can I need to get an edge in here to get my transition so I'm gonna sh drag control to get my face my extra face edge in there and then I'm gonna gumball relocate to here and then I'm going to scale slightly. That way you can see my my extra edge loop in there. So that's my step. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch these two. And do the same thing over here. And that will allow it to fade out. At least it should. At least that's how it works in my mind. We'll see whether it actually works or not. <laughs> and then I need this edge probably to come up to here and then this edge and this edge we'll bridge those together with one segment and then we can bridge this and this and that should give us yeah see that that's what we want see that Z highlight in there here that's what we we're looking for and then we'll have to adjust it because it's not, you know, it's horribly ugly right this second. But at least we have the architecture that we need in order to get the job done. So let's pull that like that. And the star point basically defines where that transition is going to start and end. Let's throw material on there so we can see what's going on. So that pretty much does what we want to do. And if you want it to be more, get my wires on. If I want it to be more, I just grab these two edges and scale them together. See how that sharpens that up and makes it... a little more defined. I'm pretty happy with that. Now, I've missed my sketch horribly, so I need to drag drag this back into shape. And my highlights drooped a bit, so I'm going to pull it up there. I want the apex of this to kind of be the center of my, my highlight core. And so this one needs to come up just a hair too. And this one needs to come back a little bit. And that'll tighten that up just a little bit. All right, so let's sort out this nightmare that we've got going on at the front. And I'm going to just pull this forward because I want this to be positive. And then let's go to box mode and make sure that we haven't made a mess, which we have. Let's pull that back. 
you can see what's going on here. See how I've pulled that too far? So let's do this. Let's make that round again. Let's make this round again. And let's raise this a little bit. I don't like how these are drooping into the model. See that? That's that's a, my favorite thing about box mode is it just shows you where all the lies are. And I actually want to I want this line to be sloping, not rising. And that I'm kind of okay with. Let's just make that a little bit more even. And then let's straighten out this nonsense down here. So I'm going to just pull this up here. I'm going to pull this up here. Pull this up here. And it has to rotate because it's going in the wrong direction. And there is a little step. I don't know if you can see it in the sketch. Maybe I'm making it up, but there is a small step here where that actually, that transition happens. And let's see how we did. Hooray! That's not bad at all. Little, few little refinements. Again, model and box, refine and smooth. I may even get rid of this crease here. Let's see, that might be too much, but let's see. Okay. Rhino's like, there's no crease there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Speak with authority and hope, hope no one notices. Um, all right, let's just, I want to just adjust that a little bit. All righty. So you can see at the bottom here, this thing, I'm showing this with a little flare. So let's see what happens if we just try and pull that flare in. And I think what, I think the result, what the result is going to be is that we actually need to add a few more edges. But, and again, I'm going to go box mode and make sure I didn't make a mess of anything. And I need to, I don't, you know, this, see this little Z right here? Don't want that. I want that to be nice and smooth. Rip. And again, beauty of box mode, all it takes is a two-second look, and you can see exactly what's going on. In fact, I may even want to move this up to here. Maybe. Yeah, I like that better. Let's see. I'm, I'm constantly, you know, I'm looking at my sketch, but I also under, not understand that, that sketches you can lie, cheat, and steal in sketches, you know, all day long and, and you know, possibly not end up with what it is that you wanted if you, quote, follow the sketch exactly. And so, especially when I'm, I'm the designer on it, you know, and I'm like, well, I know what the thing is supposed to look like in my head and maybe the sketch caught it and maybe it didn't. The goal is to make sure that the model reflects what you wanted, not you know, be a slave to the sketch. I may slide this edge just a hair in order to get it a little tighter. I like that a little better. It's got a little bit more definition. And if need be, I can always grab these faces and I can scale them out if I need that to really be more pronounced. You know, I can do stuff like that. But I think for the most part, That's about what I was looking for. Something like that. And if I don't like the proportion of that transition, I can always, you know, make adjustments to it by scaling. I like scaling as opposed to moving because it's a, you know, it's kind of a procedural process. It's kind of, it's exactly a procedural process. And it's easier to control and keep things nice and even and smooth than moving and making dents and stuff. So I'm going to I'm going to go to the top view and just to make sure I'm not entirely sure I got this thing dead symmetrical. I'm going to go ahead and reflect it and just keep one side and then I'm going to unreflect it 
That way I know everything is dead symmetrical. And if I did reflect it, you know, I can always, I can, I can make a modification on one side using reflect if you haven't seen reflect before. Um, I, can, I can make a modification over here and reflect will actually do that on the other side. So it's cool, it's a cool tool for iterating because it doesn't, it doesn't update until you let it go. So what I can say is, well, do I like that or do I like that? And I can compare it with the other side and then once I let it go, boom, then it updates. So that's the that's the Cobra Edition tricycle, but I think I'm going to leave it where it was before. All right, so I'm going to unreflect it for now because I don't need it. It's one of those tools like history. It's like it's great when you it's great to use it when you need it, but when you don't need it, I typically shut it off. So let's look at that kick in the back, and I may get away with sliding this. So let's try sliding it and see if we can slide it and get where we need what what we need. Um, and then I'm going to grab this and I'm going to scale in one D like that. And it looks like I'm getting a kick, but not not enough. So I might slide this longer. I might slide it farther down. Now notice what's happening. I'm I'm starting to lose. I'm starting to lose my curve in here, which means I may need to slide this guy and then adjust the whole thing in order to get that back. I'm trying not to add more stuff. I'm trying to do more with what I have, which is kind of, you know, a nice thing as humans. We should all be doing that, but especially with your sub-D models. <laughs> you want to you want to do as much as you can with as little information as necessary and that'll keep your models nice and smooth. I'm going to try just pulling this right to like here and I just grab it and yank it by the scruff of the neck. I'm going to make, see how my red arrow is parallel with this line here and then I can scale this thing and straighten it out. I don't know if you can hear this in the video or not, but my dog is sleeping under my desk, and I've bored her to the point where she's now snoring. <laughs> so, so I apologize if you hear somebody snoring like a trucker. That's Lucy, the 3D modeling pit bull. If you've watched my videos, you know she makes frequent cameos. <laughs> All right, let's add a little bit more shape to the top of this. And I might, you know, I might be able to get this. I might not. I may be able to pull this and get that shape. That looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that, and I didn't have to add too much more detail. So let's go to box mode and just double check. It, I don't like this kind of scenario, so what I'm going to do is just very quickly kind of repair that. I don't like to have big Zs and things, and in this case, I may not have a choice. Let's see if I can kind of play the brake on that a little bit. I would prefer that to be more vertical, but I think just the way the model is going, I'm going to need to leave it there. So let's uncrease this one and see. Not bad. I'll take that. And I can't uncrease this one because it's not a it's not an open edge. It's actually a it's it's got a, a rise in it like that and if I bring my fender up it should fit in there nicely and if it doesn't I'll adjust it so I'm not in love with this action so let's straighten that out like that I may even do this Control, rotate, see how I'm lining the blue arrow up with that, and then scale it. That flattens that out. Gumball relocate, control, rotate, see how it lines up, and then scale it. And then I can move the whole thing.
Same thing here. Gumball rotate or gumball relocate. Control rotate tilt lines up. And then scale. I'm gonna pull this out. So I'm gonna control drag that to make it longer. Now I'm gonna just scale it. And that straightens it out. And then I can pull the whole thing to where I want it to be. Cool. Too much of a beak. Let's fix that. I try to do stuff fairly symmetrically, but you can always, you know, throw a reflect on it if you need to fix it later. I may pull these two in. I don't like how it's, yeah, this is really flat right here. I think I might want a little bit more of a corner on that. And so it's nice, see how it's nice and organized, it's nice and clean, there's nothing crazy going on, there's nothing looping over each other or anything nuts like that. That's kind of what we're looking for in box mode. I picked both of them, but I'm using the seaplane icon, and then that way it keeps them from going anywhere other than just in the seaplane itself. So let's see what we got. Let's go to the top view and see. How do we feel about this? This looks kind of square to me. So let's unsquare it a little bit. See that? Nice, easy little adjustments. Let's hide the wires and just see what we got. I'll buy that. I'm imagining that you guys are all going, yeah, 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 that looks awesome. <laughs> Except for that one guy who's like, this is the worst demo I've ever seen. <laughs> I want my money back. Yeah, well, YouTube's free, so. <laughs> You can have it one back. <laughs> Alrighty, so that's our frame. I'm going to save. I'm going to make a layer. And let's assign this to a layer. I hate modeling in colors. That's just a schism I have, so I usually make all my layers black. I don't know what it is, but it's always bothered me. And then let's bring our wheels back and just see where we are. So I can see right now these wheels have to come out farther. So I'm going to move these guys out. Actually, I'm going to move the whole thing out like that. That'll give us enough room to play with to get, you know, you don't want it to be super crazy wide, but it's got to look, it's got to look cool. Maybe this guy's just a hair too wide. So let's grab all of this, and I'm going to just not rotate it. I'm going to scale it. There we go. Like that. All right. <clears throat> so let's see. What do we do next? The What are we into this thing about? Oh, we're in about an hour. Um, let's, um, let's go to the wing on this. So I'm going to hide the frame. And let's look at the wing. Now, there's a couple of ways I could do this. I could either bring, if I brought the frame back, let's hide the wheels. If I brought the frame back, you can see that I've got the bottom part of this already. And so, you know, one of the things that I could do is I could add some edges and maybe pull this out. So let's try that. Let's let's go for the easy thing first. Adding edges is super easy. And then if I grab these faces, can't grab faces unless they're shaded, and I start extruding, I can just pull those wings out. And I'm going to just scale this flat. And then let's shade it and see what it looks like. I don't hate that except for the bottom, so I'm going to get rid of all this.
that's not terrible, terrible. I may even get rid of this edge and just let that one fade out. I kind of want this detail right here to track around the bottom of this. So I might add another edge like, ooh, that's really tight. Might have to add it above. And then this, these faces here can scale out. Nope. I gotta actually get one more edge up here in order to be able to get that guy to turn the corner. So then I get these faces. These are the ones I want. And scale them outward and see that that ridge starts to appear. Might get rid of that. Again, we can play with stuff and see, like, you know, did we make a did we make a huge, humongous mess out of this or not? And I've got some stuff to clean up, so let's go let's go to box mode and let's straighten some stuff out. You can see right off the bat that I've made a hash of it. So let's straighten some of this stuff out. That should get us around the corner. Let's see. And it did not quite what I'm looking for just yet, especially this. So that's coming around. This face, this face ring right here, we might be able to get away with getting rid of it. So let's try this. And let's stitch these and see if we can let that triangle off and get around the corner that way instead. I like that better. It's a better topology. Um, but I don't like that. So I'm going to add an edge here. Let's see, what's that going to do to me? Maybe not. Maybe I have to leave that. Yeah, that's coming around the corner. I want it to come around the corner a little harder. So I've got a three-sided surface here. Ideally, I would like to have a four-sided surface, which means I think I need another edge for this guy. I'm not even going to worry about what's going on on the other side right now. I'm just going to add this like that. And then this I'm going to delete. And then I'm going to pull this back. So now I've got a, now I've got a four-sided surface and I can bridge this hole back together. That's better. See how that turned the corner a lot better? And then we'll just we'll just use, you know, we'll just use symmetry to get it around the corner. If it, and if this is too steep, see how that softens it? But I think I like that in there, so I'm going to leave it. I might actually 
Let's stitch these and see if that does anything. Yeah, that's a little better. I like that better. All right, see how we're just playing with it? I'm just trying stuff, you know, see what works. I want this to be sharper at the edge, so I'm going to add an edge and really sharpen that up. Again, remember our rule of three. We already talked about this. If we want an edge, we just grab this point and sharpen it up. That's exactly what we did here. See that? Reap. Like that. Same way. It works the same way with curves. All right. Let's look and see what we got as far as shape is concerned. And I think the shape on this thing needs a little help. But let's evaluate it in 3D and see what we like. Um, I'm going to do this in box mode. And I'm going to grab these guys, and I'm going to shear them. Like that. See how that just takes those guys and just leans them over? I like that a lot better. I think that's like a cool like skirt in the back of that thing. Tighten that up. I don't want it to tuck under. See how see how this edge is tucking under? That I don't want to happen. So maybe what I'll do is I'll slide this instead. See how so I can move that edge closer without tucking it, and that makes it sharper, but doesn't make it messy. And if we look at our box mode, let's just double check and make sure that we haven't creased anything crazy or done anything dumb. That's out a little bit. Spin around and eyeball down it. I may move this edge in a little bit. I've got kind of a weird transition here. I've got a five-sided surface right there. I can add I can add an edge in here and that may actually help that. Might not. We'll add it, see what it looks like and if it's terrible, we'll take it out. I think I like it. I think I'm going to leave it. That gives me a nice opportunity for some shape there. And we can just pull that highlight in. We're looking at the highlights, not necessarily the wires. Now if I wanted this to have more of an airfoil shape, I may have to add one edge, you know, through here, but I think I'm okay with the way it looks. You know, ideally, in order to get a corner, I'd need to have, let's see if I can make, pull this, use this more to my advantage. Yeah, I like that shape a little better. It's the coolest thing about subdies, man, you can just, you can just play with it all day long, find shapes that you wouldn't have necessarily found other ways. I, I think as far as a, an exploring tool and a, and a you know searching for forms tool, it's it's about as cool as it gets. Well, I don't love that transition, so let's fix that. <laughs> this is kind of messy. All right, let's see what that looks like. I'm pretty happy with that. It's turning the corner. We've got our nice kind of airfoil shape there. It's actually a cool highlight right here is kind of developed, which I, I do very much like. I think that's a neat shape. In fact, I may actually even push that a little bit. Let's 
squishing that in a little bit. See how that appeared a little more, a little better. I really like this kind of Porsche 911 C pillar Z highlight. Let's see what it looks like rendered. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. All right, so let's reflect it over to the other side, and we're going to just do that with the reflect tool. And I'm going to just pick a straight line, click over here, reflect it, and that gives us the final product. Let's pull our wheels back and just see what it looks like. And I actually may go with what the what the model is telling me and pull these out a little farther. Now I need to get an axle through here and so that means I probably need to either raise that whole element or drop my wheels. The easiest thing would be to drop the wheels. Um, eh, okay. Life isn't always easy. Let's take this and grab this whole thing and pull it up. Let's grab this whole thing and pull it up. And yeah, let's do it in box mode. I've got a little mess going on here. I gotta find out what that is. Ah, there we go. Let's fix that. That's it, it the if you see that stuff, don't let it slide. Because if you let it slide, it's gonna, you know, you, when you you could see that edit I just did. It um, it made a mess, right? And so when I pulled it, and I could see that it wasn't doing what I wanted it to do, then that was a really good indication that there was something in the geometry that was just not right. And so if you let that slide, it's just going to propagate down through your model. And at some point, you're going to have to deal with it, and it's usually the sooner you deal with it the better off you are instead of having to um, you know try and sort it out later <laughs> alright let's render that see what it looks like let's bring our wheels back did we get enough spot for an ax no, enough space for an axle Ooh, we're really close I may cheat that. Here, watch this. Do, do, do. I'm going to cheat it just a little bit. Let's figure out where. Holy smokes, what was that? Helps if you nudge in the right direction. And then I'm going to grab the entire thing, and I'm going to rotate it back to my ground plane. All right, let's throw an axle in here and just see where we're at, because we might have to do some more adjustments. Let's just use a NURBS. works. That's enough sheet metal. Speaking of which, I think I'm going to add a little return on the back of this from like here to here. just to give myself a little extra piece of metal back there. I kind of like that little raise in the back. I was originally thinking it should be flat, but I kind of like that. It's almost like 
a little jet exhaust or something. All right, let's bring the fender back. Let's save. And let's take a look at what we've got next. Now, I could get into the seat, and that would be a fairly easy bit to make. Um, I could also get into the handlebars again, a fairly easy bit to make. So I guess you know we need to get we need to get to both of those eventually. But let's um, let's take a look at this rear fender, and I'm going to just try and do this the simplest way possible. So I'm going to do a sub D. I'm going to use a quad style, and I'm going to smack this right in the center. I'm going to pull it out a little farther than I think it needs to go and then scale it back use the isolate command and I think I can get rid of all of this maybe I need those Scale that flat, bring it up, bring it forward like that, scale in one dimension to get my length. Same thing here, add some length, a little more, and then I'm going to grab this and bend. And I might bend this one as well. We'll see. can always undo it. And well, that's not bad. Whew, I'm sweating. <laughs> Modeling's hard. All right, let's uh, let's straighten this out. Yeah, don't tell your clients. Don't tell your clients this stuff is easy. We don't want them to know. I'm just using gumball and I'm snapping. See how I'm flattening the sides of this thing off a little bit? And if you get one side you like, just reflect it. That's a little, a little aggressive on the width, so let's straighten that out. Let's see how we did. Oops. Need a little more width up here. I am going to reflect this, that way I don't have to do it twice. He says as he runs reflect twice. <laughs> Now this has a, I, I want the no-touch side to be on the other side, so let's keep this side. There we go. And let's pull, actually let's scale one on this. Let's pull this guy out. Because if we pull that guy, we get the other ones for free, right? If I pull this edge... I get this point and half of this line for free. It's not bad. This needs to come out a little bit. Still have a little overlap there, but I might not have this thing centered exactly on the part which I can do by doing this and then let's go to box mode and just sight down it and see see how far out that is that means that this thing is going to be you know, sucking in, and I don't want that, so I'm going to straighten this out a little bit. I want everything to be positive. 
I mean, just, you know, generally speaking for humanity, you want everything to be positive, but especially in your modeling forms. And I can get this tight because I can call this the inner, and then when I want thickness on this, I can just I can just offset the sub D to the outside. So let's see how we did on our shape. Oof, that's not bad. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna say I'm gonna call that done. There's no reason to add more more mess to that. Now um, the 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 detail on here. This one has a fading detail, and because of the shape on this thing, I could I could go into the sub D and and add this. I could also convert this to NURBS, cut a slot in here, scale this you know scale this last piece out a little bit, and then call it done. I could also at that time put my darts in here, and I may I may do that for this piece because the the sub D part of it was so simple looks like I've got a little shape off here I'll do that and I think I think I am gonna do that I think I'm gonna do this stuff in nerves everybody's like boo cheater no it's not cheater it's cool it's the way that it's cool that Rhino lets you do that um, so let's let's just go down the road a little bit and see what we've got let's bring everything back let's mirror this over I'm gonna get rid of my reflections and I am going to pull this piece these edges this this face I'm gonna pull this into the model a little bit farther and, and um, overbuild it because I am going to trim this off at a later date. So I'm going to pull that through there, and then once this thing gets converted to NURBS, I'm going to trim that. So I'm not going to worry about that diving in, but I do like that sharp transition there, so I'm going to I'm going to roll with that. All right, so let's save again. I have to remind myself to do that, because I used Rhino for hours and realized that the name of the file is still untitled, and I'm like, whoops, I should save that. All right, so let's look at the let's look at the seat and in the seat area we don't have a whole lot of data here and so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to build the seat as a separate part and again I'm going to just use my loft trick and we're going to do this with sub D loft And you can see, I am going to adjust my shapes here. Even though my curves don't match, the, the parameterization of the curves doesn't match, I'm going to just add a few extra pieces and then let it go. I'm not going to worry too much about it. I'm not even going to do curves or creases or anything. Um, so let's delete the curves. And then I'm going to just pull this into shape, into a seat shape like that. Mirror it over. And I'm going to bridge those together, and that gets me my seat. I am going to add a segment in the middle because I want to be able to dish the seat just a little bit. I want that to tractor in a little bit like that. And then I just have to adjust my shape a little bit. See how, fast, see how fast this stuff comes together? It's like every time I do this, I'm like, whoa, where did that come from? Just work on the shape a little bit, get it to be something that you want. And then um, what I may do is I may either trim that off or something like that this thing is probably you know would be a stamped piece of sheet metal that would be on another piece of sheet metal um, and it would either be you know blended in or modeled in um, let's let's just for just for fun let's see what happens if we were to pull a seat post out of this thing
I'm not sure we'll get anything useful out of this, but can't hurt to try. Yeah, so extrude does some weird things if you have reflect on. So I'm going to shut reflect off. And I think if I was going to do this, I would actually need to add an edge, which I may or may not want to do because it's going to add a kink. See that? I don't really like that kink. I can always smooth that out by coming down here and, you know, pulling these apart to soften that quite a bit. And that might work, or it would be terrible. It's a lot like life. Shouldn't stop you from trying, though. Let's see. Eh, I think we got away with that. All right, I'm going to get rid of the reflect. Let's grab these two faces and extrude them. Just the faces, please. Merp. And let's add let's add an edge in here. Again, I may toss all of this. I may I may get to the end of this path and be like, whoa, not cool. But so far, so far we're okay. Messy in the box mode, so let's fix it. Don't want stuff crossing over itself. That's what we definitely don't want. So that you can, if you see that, you can immediately assume that you got some fixing to do. So I want the seat post to kind of organically come out of this body. So I'm going to just arrange these edges in a way that allows that to happen. And I kind of want it to tuck in at the back. So let's start back here and kind of just sneak up on it. I'm realizing this is going to be a long video, but I kind of don't care because this is a fun model. <laughs> and you can always fast forward if you don't like it. You don't hurt my feelings. That's getting better. See how you can immediately tell once you go into box mode what's going on. See how my smooth mode was behaving weird when I pulled that, when I, when I pulled that thing and it's it started like kinking. See this? I'm pointing with my left hand. You can't see that, but see this kink that's developing right here. That's why. See how it's crossing over itself? You don't want to do that. So that's why I say make big edits in box mode because you can just put the stuff where it needs to be. and then it does what you'd expect it to do. How bad did I get off the sketch? Not too bad. You do have to, you know, really weigh the impact of adding edges because it is really easy to add a whole bunch of detail that starts causing, you know, inflections and all sorts of stuff. In fact, I might be able to get away with getting rid of these edges right here. Maybe not. And smooth that out again. I think I prefer... 
pull this back. It's always a little bit of a balancing act, you know, you got to try and figure out like how far can you push what you have without adding stuff and what can you take away to make your life easy and simple and still get the shapes that you want. And in this case, I think I got away with it. And my sketch, you know, it isn't realistic. If I was gonna, if I was gonna look at this in front view, it'd have a big, it'd have a big mouth on it. So actually, this is a more accurate description of that shape. All right, I think that gets me what I was hoping for. Let's see. Yeah, I'm pretty okay with that. I may make the seat a little wider. Give it a little more tractory profile. And then let's get it up here where it's not crazy intersecting. I kind of like the idea of it touching at the front because I would almost imagine that there's like a tab here that maybe it it tabs into the body to you know when it's assembled maybe it's got like a little L bracket off the front of it and you stand it up on its end and then stick it in there and then fold it back and then maybe it's got like a couple rivets through here that it connects to. So that you know when you're doing designing mechanical stuff you kind of have to give it like realistic mechanical um, you know, as assembly, you know, it's got to kind of make sense from a machine point of view. I had a instructor in school who taught us all sorts of stuff about, about, uh, you know, designing sci-fi vehicles and stuff like that. And one of the things that they kept saying was, you know, if you're going to put a suspension on, you know, a fantasy suspension on it, it has to actually like make sense to be a suspension. If you're going to put windows and vents and stuff, then it has to like all kind of make sense. So if you think about that and you say, okay, well, that is actually how that thing would be assembled, then there's a certain kind of reality and a certain kind of life that the thing takes on already that, that you look at it and you say, okay, that could work. You know, So maybe we'll actually go ahead and build that bracket at some point. I won't torture you with that here, but um, if we were going to detail this thing out fully, I think that's probably something that I would add. And let's throw some materials on this. And maybe the seat looks better in white. So we're getting there. And then let's add a little thickness to the seat because I think that makes sense. Um, let's just offset it. And I have no idea how big this thing is, so I'm just going to run it at a quarter. That's way too big. That'll work. And I'm going to take this off and leave the inside rolled, and then that way that kind of gives it a little bit softer feel. All right, we can do that for this part too. Let's go ahead and add some thickness to that. I think we're pretty much done modeling on that. Maybe I'll wait until the very end to add my thicknesses. And for a rendering, you know, depending on how it's posed, if you never see the bottom of that, you don't need to add the thickness. But sometimes it just gives it a little additional weight and heft you know if we were rendering it from here and you could actually see this edge right here I you know I'd probably add some thickness to it because that would be more realistic so um, all right let's save I'm gonna make a new layer for the seat and Let's look at this handlebar assembly. I can do that with a sphere. I know that all day long, so I'm just going to stretch this out like that. And I'm actually going to rotate this. Just 
just in case you're wondering, I'm modeling it like quarter speed what I would normally be doing if I was doing a production piece. Um, this is a, a leisurely walk in the park when it comes to sub D models. Usually when I'm building a sub D model it sounds like I'm it sounds it sounds like I'm a nineteen forties office assistant typing a letter. <laughs> it's just like blah, 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 blah. <laughs> the keyboard is just going crazy. Um, but it's, it, you know, the, part of this is to be able to model and think and talk and all that kind of stuff at the same time. It cuts my speed down a little bit, but the, the you know, the main thing I want to get across is just, this is fast, you know, this stuff is fast to do. And I think I'm going to go ahead and add a couple of edges here because I don't like how that edge is like zing off like that. So let's add... I think I like that better. And I'm going to mirror it, or reflect it actually is the right term. Pick the wrong side. There we go. I'm going to just straighten these isoprams out. And it makes it a little easier to manage exactly what's going on here. So once you, you know, when you've done this for a while, you'll start to, you'll really start to be able to look at your box mode and kind of evaluate. And you'll start to read this thing and see, oh, okay, I see exactly what that shape, you know, what that, that, for you know that that shape of the box is is going to affect my overall model at the end of the day and it'll put you in a position where it'll be much easier to kind of deal with it so i'm going to insert an edge up here because i want to be able to break this part off i'm going to extract this and then i'm going to grab oops i copied it i didn't want to copy it Change that, now do this, now do that. There we go. Join these, smooth. And then I'm gonna scale this. Tuck it in like that, and then I'm gonna bridge it back together. And I'm gonna add three edges in there so that I can adjust the sharpness of that transition. And I can always pull this one out if I want to, but I'm going to leave it for now. So I want that to look like it's kind of got a chrome trim ring around it. In fact, I may even want to split this one off. And then move it forward a little bit and then bridge these back together. I probably could have just added an edge now that I think about it, but... And then I'm going to grab this center row and just scale it in. Yep. And that gives me a trim ring. And I can always crease this if it's if it really needs to be sharp like that if it needs to look like a mechanical part but I actually don't like creasing stuff so I'd rather bevel it and I like to do bevels in box mode the reason I like bevels over over creases. I'm going to actually get rid of these creases. Is because there's no such thing really as creases in real life. It's they everything's got a little bit of a fillet on it. And so it just makes sense to embrace that and work, you know, within those boundaries. 
I'm just going to scale those together so they look a little tighter. And then I probably need to do the same thing here if I bevel this. Select that edge and scale in a little bit. That should make a nice little cut between there. Or we can just poke it in like that. I think I like that better. That feels very headlighty. All right, let's add our handlebars. And the handlebars I'm just going to do with a simple pipe. I'm going to bend this. Rotate it into shape. And then let's just do a we can do a regular pipe or we could do a sub D pipe. I think um I think I'll use multi pipe. That's awfully big. Maybe we'll use regular pipe. <laughs> Multi pipe doesn't quite have as much as much uh, development on it yet, so I think uh, I think I'll go with this control. There we go. And let's position that a little better. That's got way too many subdivisions in it, but. That's all right. Let's let's send that to sub D. And let's clean it up a little bit. It's just got way too much stuff in it. So you can see that I just took I just took a a NURBS part and I ran two sub D on it and it takes the parameterization from the, the surface itself and rebuilds the sub D. But you can always, you know, you can always fix it just by getting rid of some edges. Make it a little bit simpler. That feels better. Showing a little bit of a different shape, but I think that might be a limitation of my sketch as opposed to a failure of the form. I think I just drew it badly. I think that's the only explanation I can come up with. <laughs> I think that'll work. And <clears throat> I can decide whether I want to you know, go through the trouble of trying to blend this together with sub D or whether I can just convert this to NURBS and, and add, um, you know, stuff to it later. And I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to just convert to NURBS later and then deal with it. There's sometimes when it, it's, it makes sense to actually go through the trouble of, um, you know, uh, modeling something in sub D and sometimes it just doesn't. And 
I find that, you know, the key is to be able to kind of determine uh, when to go with sub D and when to go with, uh, with NURBS modeling. And, you know, at the end of the day, it just comes down to, you know, kind of personal preference and experience and what do you want to do and how do you want to do it and all that kind of stuff. So I, you know, I'll leave that up to you to d decide when and where and why and all that kind of stuff. But, um, what I do want you to realize is that you don't need to always, always, always work in sub D or always, always, always work in NURBS. You can work in the one that works the best for your particular situation. And that is the takeaway that I want you to have no matter what you're doing, no matter which videos, mine or anybody else's that you're watching, is to make sure that you're taking this information and you're realizing that, you know, we're we're just showing you tools and we're showing you workflows. We're not, you know, suggesting that this is the only way to do something. And so what you should do is evaluate your particular situation and then, you know, decide is this a sub D part? Is this a NURBS part? Is this a mesh part? Is this a voxel part? Is this a, you know, is what, like, what am I doing and how do I do it and what do I want to do with it and all that kind of stuff. So, um, so that's, you know, that's kind of where I want you to get on this stuff. And not get locked into one type of thinking to say, well, that's, you know, this is absolutely the only way to do this job because there's just not, there's a million ways to do stuff. If you watch one of my videos and then you watch one of Brian James' videos, you'll see two completely different uh, approaches to stuff. And, you know, I'd, I'd love to, I'd, I'd love to watch his stuff because he, he does things differently than I do. And I always pick up stuff when I see his videos. So I would encourage you to do the same. I just stitched everything on the end to cap that off, and it kind of made a pinchy bit on the end. So I'm going to add this back in. Get my grips. really want these to be beefy when they get into here. Almost like the whole thing is made out of stamped metal. Like that. Let's see what it looks like with the rest of the parts. I like it, I just don't like the position of it. There we go. Double clicking to get edge loops and things like that. All right, so I'll probably convert that to NURBS at a later date and then just, you know, do the do the blends and stuff off of that. And then to to do this little gooseneck in here, I'm just going to do that with a with a uh cylinder and That's probably a little a little aggressive. And I don't need these down here. Let's go into shaded mode or a wireframe so I can see what I'm doing. And I probably don't need this up here. And this comes back like that, probably even farther. 
Let's get that shape first, and then we'll put this one in. So I've got a transition here, so I need three, I need three edges. So I'm going to slide this one down to here. So that'll be my apex, and then I need another edge. And I've got, you know, uh, it has to come up far enough to feed that. So I need another, I need another edge in here. So I'm going to add one right there, and then I can pull that shape in. I can do this in box mode so I can see what's going on. See so how you can kind of predict what's going to happen in box mode. You're starting to be able to read that. That's better. All right, let's see what it looks like with the headlight. I'm sure we've got some more adjustments to do, but that's okay. Very fat. All right, and so I'm going to just trim those off at a later date and then and then blend and fillet those together. In fact, let's go ahead and do that now. Let's do this and let's do two nerbs. And I am going to delete the input objects. I typically would keep those, but I'm pretty comfortable with where I'm heading here. So I'm going to cap this guy. And I'm going to just Boolean these together. And then I'm going to use the blend. And that's massive. So let's bring it down a little bit. And let's preview it and see what it looks like. Don't like that. So let's add some edges. That's going to blow apart on me. Reamp. Let's do set all. Get a decent starting point. There we go. Now it didn't trim it, which is fine. Um, for whatever reason, it it just decided that it didn't want to didn't want to do that for me so I'm gonna go ahead and grab all of these and join them and then I'm gonna explode this and then I'm gonna go to wireframe and I'm gonna trim I'm gonna use the curve switch CRV enter and what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow me to pick these curves of that surface and trim off this guy. There we go. Same thing up here. Trim, CRV, enter. Pick these guys. And, you know, I'm sure somebody's like sitting there yelling at the screen, why won't it trim? Why won't it trim? I see that happening all the time. I don't know, man. I went to art school. I mean, I'm, not, I'm the only person at McNeil who's not a programmer. Um, so, I don't know. I just, I just, I don't worry too much about it. I just, I just do the curve switch because that tends to work when the auto trim doesn't work and I just move on and that reduces the stress in my life which if you work in commercial art you probably need that too so don't sweat it there is a tool to make it work just use it and move on All right, let's see what that looks like.
I like that. Do the same thing here. I'm just going to bring these guys together. And I'm going to re-mirror this because I made a change and I don't know if it got reflected. Boolean. Now it went backwards. That's because the V's are facing the wrong direction. Or something's facing the wrong direction. So we'll fix the normals. Run it again. And then I'm going to blend this as well. That's the right click, by the way, on the, on that fillet tool. Whoa, too big. And in this case, see how it's overlapping right there? So I can tell that that's not going to work. So let's... And if it doesn't work, right, and let's say it doesn't, let's just, let's say that it's just completely misbehaving and it doesn't want to do what we want it to do. Then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to select the edge of this. And I'm going to dupe this edge. And I'm going to do what's called the James Carruthers pipe trim trick. That's what I call it because James is the one that taught me this. If you don't know James Carruthers, he's been around for a long time. I learned a lot of what I know about Rhino from his groundbreaking series, Form vs. Shape 1 and Form vs. Shape 2, which came out, I don't know, man, a long time ago. But anyway, um, this is a trick that, that I first saw on his CDs or DVDs, and I thought it was really cool. And so basically what we do is... We get a curve. We make sure it's a complete curve. We make a pipe out of it. And we use this to model a gap. Then we simply use a blend surface with chained edges. And we get a beautiful blend. Where Fillet let us down, James Carruthers to the rescue. All right, and then we just go to the top view, isolate, let's trim this in half, let's mirror this, and we should be out of here unless I did something dumb. Looks like I missed the center with this guy, which is a little annoying. I would probably trim that out and fix it. Let's go back a few steps. Yeah, it looks like when I booleaned this, I booleaned it off center. Eh, that's annoying. All right, let's fix it. Trim. Helps if you actually center the stuff when you are building the parts. Let's dupe the edge, and I'm going to use that edge to do a trim. Bring this original part back, and then we'll just reassemble it using a blend.
I may even I may even make that blend a little bit more severe by pulling this out. We'll see. Maybe I'll make a mess. We'll see. Chain. Gonna add an edge at least. There we go. And it looks like I'm asking a lot from blend, so I'm gonna back it off just a hair. And I'm gonna do tangency instead. See how it's kind of folding over itself back there? I'm gonna just relax that a little bit. <laughs> All right. There we go. Let's save. <laughs> Let's add some materials to this. Whoa. Sub object selection. It's a beautiful thing for adding materials. Now we have to tackle the elephant in the room, which is the which is the you know the the stripes and stuff like that. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my I'm going to add my materials first. And I think, or I'm going to add my thicknesses first. So I'm going to go and add this the thickness in sub D. And we'll do that. I'm going to take this crease off because I want it to soften the outside. And then it's like I get just a nice little thickness on that. I'm going to do the same thing here. Sub D offset. And I'm going to flip that because I'm just going to go, I'm going to go out instead of in. Get rid of that crease. And see how that gives it kind of that nice weighty kind of like it's almost die cast look. I'm going to do the same thing here. Then I can start getting into things like the the detailing of this. And I'm going to just two nerves this because I'm going to split with some curves. And let's go to the front view. And I'm going to get rid of my isoprams for the time being. And that will allow me to kind of take a look at this and split it up the way I want to split it up. I'm going to just do that with a curve. Do my point adjustments. Nudge is fantastic for this kind of work. Maybe those, maybe those, those, this detail here, maybe that's a paint line instead of a modeling, actual modeling thing. Maybe we just paint that on.
can't trim that if it's not touching. There we go. I'm going to make this just one curve. Let's join all that up. I'm going to split this. Alrighty. Use the match tool to fix my sloppy curve making. You can see where <laughs> curves don't line up. Let's fix that. There we go. Oops. Alright. Join that up. Let's do a split. And then I'm going to just assign material to that. You say cheating, I say efficient. <laughs> So that looks cool. Let's do the other one. Ooh, that's an ugly curve. Let's fix that later. If you've been doing this for a while, you start to like be able to kind of see what curves are supposed to look like, and then if you miss it, it's just like getting punched in the cornea. It's like, oof! Your eyes are like, why? Why are you doing this to me? All right, let's fix this. That was the one that was really horrible. That's better. And let's split it. Now, you could texture map this, right? You could go through all the hassle of texture mapping and all that kind of stuff, but it's like, man, I don't have time for that stuff. I, you know, and to be honest, our texture mapping tools are not amazing anyway, so I don't think we're, we're not fooling anybody trying to convince them that they are. So I think that at the end of the day, this is a, this is a pretty efficient way to get where we want to be. And let's deal with this. And I think we've got just a fork and a few other things to deal with, and then I think we're out of here. And I think we got to split this to get the difference between the headlight and the chrome. I'm going to pull this shape out. And I need, I need a little bit of that for the headlight, but I'm going to split by ISO curve. Helps if I do it right. All right, split by ISO curve. And I'm going to split that right there. And then that goes with the headlight. 
And I'm going to just put a custom material on that placeholder for now. Um, and then we'll put metal here. And then I'd, I'll map a, I'll map like a headlight image or something like that on there. That maybe the seat looks better red. Be cool maybe if it had a white detail on it. Let's do that. That's cool. I like that better. A little detail on it like that. And then the last thing that we really need to do is to build the forks and the pedals and stuff like that, but we can do that with simple nerves objects. I'm going to use the fillet corners command and I'm going to just put a 80 thou radius on that so that it radiuses all those at the same time. Boo. Actually, I'm going to undo that. There we go. Helps if that's straight. Now let's do that. Fillet corners. There we go. And then we'll pipe it. And kind of overshot it there in the corner. We actually need to fill it that, fill it the corners on that a little harder. Let's do, let's do quarter inch. There we go. Now let's pipe that because if when you looked at it, and we saw the pipe, it was like crossing over itself. We don't want that. That's better. Control shift click the end make it a little shorter. And we probably want to add some details to that pedal or something, but we can always do that another time. To get, relocate the gumball here and just 180 that. That way we've got our pedals. That's black. That's looking pretty cool. I'm going to get rid of my wires in here. And then let's just model the fork up real quick and I think we'll be out of here. <coughs> oh, 
I'm going to do this with a torus. I'm going to start with a torus. And start with a sub D torus. And we've kind of, we're already pretty nicely oriented, but I kind of want one edge to be going right straight up the center of this one. I want it to be going right up the center of the fork because I'm going to grab these faces. I'm going to use the C plane icon, but I'm going to hold down control and I'm going to just start extruding. Oh, that was so hard. Somebody's hard. <laughs> Tell everybody that. Tell everybody how hard somebody is. <laughs> that way they don't say, hey, why are you charging me so much money when somebody's so easy? No, it's hard. It's really hard. And then let's get this centered. And I could snap it to center, but I'm not going to worry about it. And I may even leave that. Let's take, I was going to say, I may, oh drop my mouse, duh. I may even take, I was, I was going to leave it full width, but I don't think I'm going to. I'm going to just make it so it is, it does look like a stamped piece of metal like that. Here. And then let's bridge these two together. have to have at least one additional edge if you want to use the straightness slider. And I think I want it actually pretty straight, so I'm going to go back to one. And I'm even going to get rid of, I think I'm going to get rid of this edge. Mm, maybe not. Well, let's add some thickness to it. Well, let's adjust it first. Yeah, I don't like that either. Although I guess it's tucked inside the body, so we don't really care. Helps if it's centered. crown in a little bit. And then let's add some thickness to it just so it looks a little bit more realistic. Sub D offset. And I'm going to go in on that. And then it probably needs something that looks like a hub that rides somewhere in there. So let's add a little additional little cap. And I'm just going to do that with a sphere. Again, control shift click on the end of this thing, and I'm just going to drag it, sub object, edit that down in. If you have, if you don't 
know what I'm talking about when I say sub-object edits. Um, Brian James has a great video called Hello Gumball. You should take a look at that one. And then there's also one called Gumball Super Superpowers on uh, our YouTube that you might want to take a look at. And that'll go through all of the various Gumball whatnot. Definitely worth checking out if you haven't checked that out before. Just boolean those together. Although I probably didn't want to do that. I wanted to leave them separate so I could have different materials. And let's see if we need new rendering material on that. Actually, I feel okay about that. And where are we at? Eh, two and a half hours. That's not bad. I just have a headlight image that I'm going to map onto this. And let's fix the texture mapping on it. We're going to just do a planar map. Nope. Planar map. Merp. There we go. And we'll show the mapping. And let's just adjust it a little bit. Hide the mapping. Bring everything back. And I'm going to hide the image. Let's adjust the camera just a hair. I like using 35 millimeters lens, lens length when I'm doing renderings because it makes it just a little bit more heroic. And I'm going to just roll with completely 100% default settings and just hit ray trace. And in about just a hair over two and a half hours, we have a fully built sub-D tricycle. I'm going to turn on my denoisers, let that clean up, pause it, and we're good to go. Job done. I'll use this to do a little bit more in-depth rendering demo later, but I think as far as the modeling is concerned, this is pretty much pretty much done. Hope you enjoyed that. My name is Kyle Houchins. I'm a tech and a trainer for McNeil. And I hope you're enjoying SubD as much as I am. Hope you learned a few things. Go make great stuff. Thanks, everybody. Bye.